As one of the most respected voices in combat sports, Joe Rogan's predictions carry significant weight among fans and pundits alike. Recently, Rogan made headlines with a bold prediction for the upcoming showdown between Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, two rising stars in the world of boxing. In his trademark style, Rogan weighed in on the highly anticipated matchup, offering his insights into what promises to be a thrilling clash of talent and skill. Despite the inherent unpredictability of boxing, Rogan made a bold proclamation regarding the outcome of the Garcia-Haney fight, capturing the attention of fans and sparking debate within the boxing community. Joe Rogan offered his insights on Ryan Garcia's prowess, drawing attention to the intricacies of his martial arts skills. Collaborating with acclaimed UFC Hall of Famer and actor Bass Rutten, Rogan elevated the conversation with their combined expertise, making for an engaging and interactive episode. During their lively conversation, they explored a range of subjects, honing in on the infamous liver shot, a formidable strike in the realm of combat sports. Rogan brought up a recent event where a well-known boxer had to admit defeat following a brutal liver shot from his opponent. This incident sparked criticism from numerous fans who saw it as a sign of the boxer's faltering commitment. Yet Rogan, drawing from his extensive experience as a martial artist, comprehended the nuanced factors influencing the boxer's choice to concede. Rogan's reference to the pugilist unveiled a surprise, none other than the celebrated former WBC interim lightweight champion, Ryan Garcia. Despite enduring scrutiny from certain quarters for his earlier bout's seemingly premature conclusion, Rogan and Rutten steadfastly backed him with their vocal encouragement. Amidst their analysis of pivotal strikes in combat sports, Rutten shared a harrowing anecdote of narrowly avoiding a liver shot that nearly rendered him unconscious. Rogan's curiosity was instantly sparked by this captivating tale, pulling him deeper into the discussion. He swiftly silenced Garcia's critics with a well-placed question. Have you ever been hit there before? Asked the former martial artist. It appeared as though he hinted that the onlookers could never truly grasp Garcia's inner turmoil in that moment. Undoubtedly, the agony must have been excruciating for Ryan Garcia to acknowledge defeat while maintaining a facade of composure. Moreover, a boxer as accomplished as Garcia would undoubtedly test his limits to maintain his flawless track record. Hence, Rogan speculated that critics' aversion to liver shots prompted such remarks. Meanwhile, Garcia's recent unsettling social media updates, initially odd, took a chilling twist with references to none other than Joe Rogan, casting a sinister shadow over the evolving storyline. The now-deleted posts mention things like, the files of UFOs are coming out for a reason, as well as, this isn't Ryan, I've hacked his shit. The UFC community was buzzing about a tweet that caught everyone's eye, particularly because it not only mentioned Joe Rogan, but also delved into a remote campground steeped in various conspiracy theories. The post read, Bohemian Grove. I was the only one to expose them. They were in the woods. Joe Rogan and Alex Wood say the same thing, and I'm the bad guy. Nestled within the vast expanse of 2,700 acres in California lies the secretive enclave known as Bohemian Grove, a haven reserved for the elite and powerful, often referred to as the elites, who allegedly gather here on an annual basis. Legend has it that this retreat was founded by none other than the renowned Mark Twain, adding to its mystique. Although concrete evidence remains elusive, radio personality Alex Jones boldly asserted having acquired footage depicting a ceremonial assembly within the Grove's confines back in the year 2000. Joe Rogan has frequently explored the intriguing world of conspiracy theories centered around a specific place in various discussions. One memorable occasion arose during a lively exchange with Alex Jones, delving into the mysterious rituals linked to the location. In a more recent conversation with Kid Rock, the topic resurfaced as the musician recounted an incident where he was purportedly removed from the Grove after an altercation involving a punch to the head. Ryan Garcia also unveiled his personal experience with the Grove, shedding light on his unique encounter with the locale. Garcia teamed up with Andrew Tate for an exclusive interview on X Spaces, 
where he delved into his recent visit. He revealed, they took me to the fucking woods and they tied me down. I'm not fucking joking. I have proof. Bohemian Grove is real. They fucking tied me down and they made me watch. Yes, I fucking lost it. When asked if he had proof, the 25-year-old said, if Alex Jones could get a video from the Bohemian Grove, of course I could. In light of the controversy surrounding Garcia's bout with Devin Haney, the WBC super lightweight champion responded to the social media posts. In a now deleted tweet, Haney wrote, the fight is happening April 20th. He's just playing crazy to sell it which is weird because it's people who are actually crazy out there, but he's just acting for attention. Haney's suspicions regarding Garcia's authenticity were swiftly countered by the ex-champion's response, albeit not without triggering worry for his former spouse. Anxiety has steadily grown around Garcia since the controversy emerged, especially within the circles of his previous partner, Andrea Salina. The Mexican fitness influencer and mother to two of Garcia's children found herself caught in the tumult of his actions. In light of recent events, Andrea wrote on her Instagram story, If all my followers, who are believers, can you please pray for Ryan? We are not together, and I've been in contact with him. A few hours after this, though, Garcia addressed the situation himself, much to everyone's relief. He said, Hey guys, it's Ryan. I'm coming on here to explain what's going on. I'm not in possession of my phone. I can't get access to my Instagram. My cards are locked. I'm being really taken advantage of. The entirety of the combat sports community, beyond just Ryan Garcia's inner circle, has expressed widespread concern regarding the unfolding narrative. Echoing Rogan's sentiments, promoter Leonard Ellerby finds himself on the brink of withdrawing Garcia from the impending bout with Haney, citing mounting concerns. He said, if he were my fighter, I'd pull him. Yeah, everything you're reading is kind of what it is. Ellerby's concerns stem from unsettling reports about the renowned fighter. However, in the midst of conjecture, the probability of such a departure still appears distant. When asked who he would favor between Haney and Garcia, Ellerby said, it's a good fight for both of them at this point in their careers. Neither won. You have to focus because a big part of the preparation isn't just the physical part, it's mental preparation. Ellerbe shared his thoughts on Garcia, emphasizing the formidable demands of competing at an elite caliber. He underscored the paramount importance of unwavering focus, particularly when contending at the pinnacle of the sport. He said, to fight at an elite level, it's hard to do everything. And I know firsthand that when you're fighting at the highest level, you've got to have a tremendous amount of focus. Furthermore, he pondered whether Ryan was actively championing the bout, albeit uncertain about the precise extent of his involvement. He added, It's always hard when you're a younger fighter and you haven't been in a lot of big-time fights to be able to. You got to sit still. It could be that he's Ryan promoting the fight. I don't know what he's doing. As revelations about Ryan Garcia's recent online remarks swirl, the New York State Athletic Commission has stepped in, advocating for a mental health evaluation for the boxer. This development has prompted a bemused reaction from his fellow 140-pound contender, Michel Lazarza Ali Rivera. Rivera can't help but shake his head wryly. He holds firm to the belief that even amidst Garcia's mental health concerns, the impending bout appears more as a money-making venture than a true test of skill and competitiveness. Rivera told Boxing Scene, Let's be honest here. Everyone knows Haney will mop the floor with Garcia. Garcia may have a lot of followers, but he is overrated as a fighter. Haney will win the fight easily. Furthermore, Rivera expresses unwavering assurance in his ability to step in for Garcia in the event that Garcia is unable to compete due to unforeseen circumstances. He said, boxing fans know that a fight between Haney and me would be very competitive. I am focused and have been training. No one knows if crazy Ryan Garcia will even step in the ring on April 20th. And even if he does, what kind of shape is he in? I am the biggest threat to Haney at 140 pounds and ready to step in for Garcia. However, the saga continues. 
Duke McKenzie has also made a heartfelt plea to Ryan Garcia's camp, urging them to reconsider his participation in the upcoming Devin Haney bout. McKenzie, renowned for his advocacy in mental health and boasting a storied career as a three-time world champion across various weight divisions, voices concerns over Garcia's recent conduct. Speaking about the rising contender on TalkSport's Fight Night, he said, I think Ryan Garcia is walking a very fine line. He could go either way, to be honest with you. I think when you're a world champion, you have to carry yourself as a world champion. McKenzie highlighted Garcia's public acknowledgement of regularly indulging in cannabis, alcohol consumption, and getting intoxicated. McKenzie perceives these behaviors as incongruent with the standards of a world champion and suggestive of potential personal challenges. He added, I don't really see that in Ryan Garcia's makeup right now. He's publicly said he smokes weed, drinks alcohol, and gets drunk regularly. These aren't the sort of traits you would expect of a world champion. These are the traits of somebody who's clearly on the edge. Based on his observations, McKenzie believes that the battle shouldn't take place. He said, they should pull him out. Somebody should pull him out. Somebody should say to him, Ryan, you're not in any fit state to fight right now. It's not too late. McKenzie reiterated grave concerns, emphasizing the clear risk of Garcia enduring severe injuries should the bout continue. Expressing a strong conviction, McKenzie underscored the potential dire consequences at stake. He added, you can schedule a fight three months, six months, however long it takes for this boy to get right in his own mind because he's clearly not. It's not rocket science. He can get seriously and will get seriously hurt if this fight goes. I'm pretty sure of that. In a recent segment on the Jake Paul podcast, the enigmatic YouTuber didn't shy away from sharing his take on the anticipated showdown between Garcia and Haney. Jake Paul, known for his outspoken nature, likened the bout's chances to a coin flip, deeming it a dead heat at 50, 50 odds. However, when pressed to pick a favorite, the 27-year-old problem child threw his support behind the dream, firmly backing him for the win should the match come to fruition. In the April of the year prior, Garcia faced his first significant career obstacle as Gervonta Davis clinched a knockout victory in the seventh round. Recognizing the weight of this defeat, Paul based his prediction for the upcoming Haney match squarely on this foundation. He said, Ryan isn't taking it seriously and he showed me his lack of heart by not getting up on the canvas when he basically quit. He would have stood up. Currently, Ryan Garcia faces a formidable predicament. The prevailing consensus depicts him as the undeniable underdog in his imminent clash with Haney. To alter this narrative, he must exert significant exertion. Paul, endorsing Garcia's status as the underdog, suggests that participating in a bout with him may not merit acknowledgement as a professional encounter. He noted, I think it could be like an exhibition probably. I think he thinks he could win and I would like to just deflate his little 130 pounds. During the discussion, Paul stood firm when confronted about a potential clash with Rye. He underscored a notable weakness in Garcia's intellect, despite his critique of the 25-year-old stemming from a perceived lack of dedication. Paul said, his footwork sucks once I'm learning more about the sport, it's like he's fast and quick and has been doing it his whole life, obviously. But his feet, I would tear him apart. In a bid to heal the lingering wounds in his connection with Canelo Alvarez from years gone by, Garcia is actively seeking reconciliation. Prompted by Canelo's recent acts of generosity towards him, Garcia openly conveyed appreciation to the revered Mexican boxer for the pivotal mentorship he provided during the formative years of his career in the ring. Taking to Instagram, Garcia tactfully alluded to his own Mexican roots as a gesture to initiate dialogue with Alvarez. Garcia's ancestors originate from Mexico, even though his parents were born in the United States. He wrote, No amount of hate can separate our Mexican bond Canelo. Garcia and Alvarez recently sparked a heartfelt conversation on social media, highlighting their shared respect and commitment to honoring their Mexican heritage. This unexpected display of camaraderie left followers pleasantly surprised, 
Given the infrequency of such amicable interactions between the two athletes in recent times, Garcia further added in his post, Thank you, Canelo, for all the lessons and teachings you gave me. Also, thank you to the Canelo team for all the training you helped me with. Forever grateful, and I'm thankful. From the bottom of my soul. A proud Mexican, Canelo Alvarez replied gracefully. In comments, the 33-year-old wrote, Just focus and get that win. You know we love you, kid. The recent interaction between Canelo and Kingry has sparked considerable interest. Despite Kingry facing backlash for his online behavior in the boxing world, Canelo has shown a level of support, though without explicitly endorsing or denouncing his actions. This gesture carries weight for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it comes from Canelo, a highly influential figure in the